When I graduated from law school in 1987, I reached a goal I'd had since I was a very small boy. My dad was a lawyer and later a judge, and I knew that becoming a lawyer was what I wanted to be when I grew up. Like me, many of the students in my law school class were traditional students who had gone directly from undergraduate to law school. We all worked hard in law school, but without some of the pressures that some students had. Some were married and had small children. Others had full-time jobs and were working by night, going to school by day. The dedication of these students was amazing. The fact that they could honor their other ob obligations and at the same time keep up with the demands of law school was extremely impressive. Looking back, I have real admiration for those students. In the 34 years since graduating from law school, my admiration and appreciation for my fellow lawyers has only grown. That's because numerous studies recognize that lawyers are among the top-ranked professions for giving back to their communities, from volunteering for char charitable organizations to serving on school boards or city council, Lawyers have always answered the call for service. Lawyers have the understanding, knowledge, and critical thinking to provide valuable advice and counsel for all kinds of organizations in our communities. In addition to community service, lawyers provide thousands of hours of pro bono legal services every year. Hundreds of thousands of Missourians annually depend on us to provide free or reduced fee services without which access to justice would be an impossibility. Service has always been, and hopefully will continue to be, a fundamental part of our profession. Thank you for giving back. In the past 18 months, we have faced obstacles that most never anticipated. With very little to no notice, lawyers had to figure out new ways to meet the legal needs of clients. Remote execution of documents, virtual court appearances, and Zoom meetings all became commonplace last year. Some of these changes will become permanent, providing increased efficiencies for lawyers and clients alike. Things also changed for our Missouri Bar. We haven't had an in-person meeting for a year and a half. Unfortunately, contractual obligations with the St. Louis Hilton required a decision more than six months ago as to whether the annual meeting would be held in person. At the time, there was still a huge amount of uncertainty as to when gatherings of large groups would be possible, especially in St. Louis. In the face of escalating cancellation fees, the fiscally prudent decision was made to hold the meeting virtually, just as we did in 2020. Still, we have learned over the past year that virtual meetings provide opportunities for participation by lawyers who have not attended such meetings in the past. Last year, for example, the average attendance in our sessions was more than double the attendance in 2019. And that's not to say that virtual meetings are better than meeting in person, but we are looking for ways to bring lawyers together for meetings while at the same time providing a mechanism to allow lawyers to appear virtually. I'm excited about next year's annual meeting in Springfield and hope you will join me, whether they're in person or via the internet. I admire lawyers and our bar organizations who adapt as necessary to better serve their clients and members. And I admire and appreciate professionalism among my colleagues. I've been very fortunate to have some great role models in my career. I found it helpful to occasionally take a look at our oath of admission. Among other promises, we agreed to maintain the respect due courts of justice, judicial officers, and members of my profession. We serve our clients best when we fulfill this oath. So, what's important to the Missouri Bar in serving our members and the public? Some of the same things that were important to our organization 80 years ago. Alan Oliver from Cape Girardeau was the last president of the Volunteer Missouri Bar Association in 1943-44. He and other lawyers from that era recognized the benefits of a unified bar where all lawyers in the state are members of the same body which helps them even better serve their clients and collectively achieve their responsibilities to the profession and to the public as outlined in the Oath of Admission. In recent years, some lawyers, both within Missouri and in other states, have questioned the mere existence of the Unified Bar. But just as the members of our profession believe 77 years ago, I truly believe, and the Board of Governors believe, 
that Missouri lawyers are best served through a unified bar. Another former bar president from Cape Girardeau, Rush Limbaugh Sr., was involved in another issue that remains important today. In the early 1940s, Mr. Limbaugh was instrumental in the initiative petition to establish the nonpartisan court plan for selection of appellate judges. Admittedly, there's no perfect mechanism for selecting our judges, nor is any procedure for doing so free from political influences. But I believe the Missouri plan is far better than any alternative, and as a result, it has been adopted in various forms by more than 30 other states as it produces highly qualified judges in the least political way. We will also continue to look for even better ways to serve our members. We have roughly 50 committees working on behalf of our 30,000 members. To all those who take time to serve on these committees, thank you. Your work is critical to the Bar's mission. Five years ago, Judge Paul Wilson and Bill Bay co-chaired a 50-person task force created by the Supreme Court and the Missouri Bar to study the future of the profession. The group issued a report that contained detailed recommendations covering topics such as entry into the practice of law, leaving or limiting the practice of law, technology, and access to legal services. Some of the suggestions have been implemented, others have not. It's time to review and update the report to ensure that our profession adapts to meet the needs of today's lawyers and consumers. And finally, we will continue our focus on diversity and lawyer well-being. We should lead by example in each of these areas, striving to ensure that equal opportunities for retention and advancement exist for all members of our profession, and that our colleagues prioritize self-care so, so that we may be the best problem solvers for our clients. As we embark on another bar year, which will require lawyers to continue to adapt both as individuals and through our bar organizations, I welcome your input. I look forward to visiting with lawyers throughout the state, either through virtual or in-person bar events, or your local specialty or affinity bar organizations. The small boy who knew he wanted to be a lawyer when he grew up never imagined serving as president of the Missouri Bar. I could not be prouder to represent those who I continue to admire for your service to your clients and communities. Thank you.